Welcome back to my channel, YouTube. Listen, we're gonna jump right in. My name is Brandon. I'm an executive chef here in Silicon Valley. And basically I create content and I am doing a new series on YouTube, which involves culinary basics, fundamentals. I am basically teaching from this book, ninth edition of the professional chef. So it's not just all my opinion. There are facts based things in here. I recommend you go buy the book, but if you don't want to, I'm gonna have a PDF version down below so you can follow along. So in today's episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the fish basics, common fish types. We're also gonna try to cram in shellfish and other sea life, I should say. I'm gonna give you just the Cliff Notes version of exactly what you need. One, if you're an avid home cook or if you're a professional chef, kill two birds with one stone, I should say. One of the common questions I always get as a chef and a content creator is, hey chef, how do I know where to get good fish from? What should it look like? What should it taste like? Hopefully this will help clarify some things. Let's hop right in. We are gonna start on page 100. Fish basics. The increased value of seafood demands that a chef must be familiar with a wide variety of fish and shellfish and their sources. Being able to select absolutely fresh fish and shellfish of the best quality and understand the best cooking method or methods to use in their preparation. The first step in the selection process is assessing the purveyor or market. The fishmonger should properly handle ice and display the fish and should be able to answer any questions regarding the fish's origin and its qualities or oily, firm textured or delicate, appropriate for moist heat method or able to withstand a grill's heat. I ran into this issue the other day. I was at Whole Foods, I needed some fish on the fly and I said, hey, what fish do you have available? And the guy working behind the counter was like, hey, um, we have black bass. And I'm like, okay, great, from the East Coast, perfect, can I see it? And he's like, well, no, it's local. And I'm like, okay, no, it can't be. If it's black bass, let me see what it looks like. He pulls up the bass, him and his manager, they swore up and down that it was from, it was local. And I'm like, it's not a local fish. Black bass only comes from the East Coast. I didn't want to embarrass them, but that is the reason why I'm doing this. This is the baseline. What I wanted to do in that moment wouldn't have been the right situation, but I wanted to correct it and say, hey, look, this is not correct. So you're going to tell somebody this is a local fish when really it's an East Coast fish. That's the problem, okay? Moving on, market forms of fish and fish can be purchased fresh in the market forms described here. And I'm still on page 100. Now I'm not going to talk about some of these. I just want to talk about some portions. Whole fish. This is fish that as it was caught completely intact, the typically refer to as in the round. Drawn fish, we don't use this term. We call it H and G or G and G, which means gilled and gutted or head off and gutted. If I'm a chef in a restaurant, I'm getting the fish whole no matter what. Gilled and gutted, right? I want the head on, gilled and gutted, also scaled. So scaled G and G is what we call it. It's important for you to know that. Next, we're gonna go down to portions. So steak, filet, tranche, which we rarely use anymore. It's a really old school technique and also pave. The steak. This is a portion sized cross cut section from a dressed fish. Portion cuts from the fillets of large fish such as tuna and swordfish are also commonly called steaks. Fillet. This is a boneless piece of fish removed from either side of the backbone. The skin may or may not be removed before cooking. Purveyors often sell fillets pin bone in, so it's important to specify pin bone out when ordering. The tranche or tranche, we should skip that because it's a really old school technique, but it's basically cutting on a diagonal. We're going to go into the pave. The pave is the most common and that's what I use the most. Basically, it's a portion size square cut from a filet. A pave is generally cut from a large filet, for example, salmon, halibut, mahi-mahi, or tuna. I'm just gonna say it. I try to stay away from buying fish at grocery stores. Look for a local wholesaler that sells retail or try to find a local fish wholesaler. They'll just have better quality. Unfortunately, there's really not any good grocery stores that carry fish that's super fresh. It's been there for days. So if you have a local fish monger, that is your best bet. Okay, next, checking for freshness in fish. I couldn't agree with this more. I'm gonna read directly from the book. To ensure that fish are of best quality, the chef should carefully inspect them, checking for as many of the following signs of freshness and quality as possible. Fish should be received at a temperature of 40 or less. The fish should have a good overall appearance. Clear slime, no cuts or bruising, pliable fins. The scales should adhere tightly to the fish. The flesh should respond to light pressure and not feel soft. Now that's debatable. There are some fish that, you know, they're just not super firm, like trout, for example. Salmon can be firm to the touch, but wild salmon sometimes is not firm to the touch, right? Unless it's still in rigor. The eyes should be clear, bright, and bulging. The gills should be bright pink to maroon in color. And if mucus is present, it should be clear. There should be no belly burn, evidence that the guts were left in the fish too long, resulting in bacteria and enzymes breaking down the flesh along the rib cage. The fish should have a clean, sweet, sea-like smell. 
I think this is really important. Use your best judgment if you're choosing fish. Even for myself as a chef, there have been times where a vendor or a purveyor have tried to sneak it by me, right? And it didn't work out because I'm telling you right now, I weigh everything. It doesn't matter. If it's a piece of protein, it hits the scale. Along with that process, I also make sure to check every single piece. And then my rule of thumb is make sure you check it like you're gonna feed it to your children. Storage. Under correct storage conditions, fish and shellfish should be held for several days without losing any appreciable quality. Ideally, however, the chef should purchase only the amount of fish needed for a day or two and should store it properly as described below. All right, so we're gonna go over these. Pay attention. If you're at home, you're probably gonna get the fish ready to go. This is more for a professional chef or kitchen. Stay tuned, here we go. One, always keep fish at a proper storage temperature and handle them as little as possible. Fin fish, 28 to 32 degrees. Smoke fish, 32 degrees caviar 28 to 32. Number two, whole drawn H and G and dressed fish may be rinsed at this point. Scaling and fabricating should be delayed until close to service time. Place the fish on a bed of shaved or flaked ice in a perforated container such as a hotel pan with a draining pan, preferably stainless steel. The fish should be belly down and the belly cavity should be filled with shaved ice as well. Cover with additional ice. Fish may be layered if necessary with shaved or flaked ice. Cubed ice can bruise the fish's flesh. It also will not conform as closely to the fish. Shaved or flaked ice makes a tighter seal around the entire fish. This prevents undue contact with air, slowing loss of quality and helping to extend safe storage life. Set the perforated container in a second container. In this way, as the ice melts, the water will drain away. If the fish is allowed to sit in a pool of water, flavor and texture loss will occur. The longer it sits, the greater loss of quality. Re-ice fish daily. Even when properly iced, fish will gradually lose some quality. To slow this loss, skim the top layer of ice from the storage container and replace it with fresh ice. That is it. I couldn't agree with this more. You know, as a chef, I was a Nazi about fish. I think what's really important to note is there's some techniques that you could use in the professional kitchen. There's purveyors that have these microfiber paper towels that are kind of like disposable or, you know, single use. I forgot what they're called, but they're really good. Some fish purveyors have a special type of ice that have antibacteria properties in them or something. I, I can't really speak on it. I don't know. But I know that when I was in Los Angeles, one of the fish purveyors was like, hey, I'm going to give you some extra ice to store this fish. Also, keep in mind that I don't know if this is a wives tale or not, but we did a test of using fresh ice compared to not using any fresh water at all. Just wiping the fish because once you put fresh water on the fish, word was that it would start to decay faster. Now, I don't know if it's 100 percent true. I didn't really do that much research on it, but I do know there's a difference if you use the shaved ice compared to the cubed ice, right? So just like the book says, I couldn't agree with that more. And also have a perforated pan and make sure first in, first out when you are serving fish. Super important. Make sure the fish is properly rotated and you also have somebody on it. So now we're gonna go into common fish types. If you do not have the PDF downloaded or the book, follow along. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Just at least download this section because when training young cooks or when trying to teach people at the house, there's a big difference between you're butchering fish, when you're fabricating fish, between the flat fish and the round fish, okay? There's also fish that have zero bones, right? Like they have like cartilage, like a good example would be sturgeon, right? Or monkfish. Monkfish still has a backbone, but it's an awkward fish to break down. So pay attention here because this will give you some clarification. For everybody that's following along, we are on page 101 and we're at common fish types. All right, let's get into it. The skeletal structure of a fish is a useful means of separating fin fish into smaller groupings. The three basic types of fin fish are flat, round, and non-bony. Flat fish have a backbone that runs through the center of the fish with the two upper and two lower fillets and both eyes on the same side of the head. Round fish have a middle backbone with one fillet on either side and one eye on each each side of the head. Non-bony fish have cartilage rather than bones. Fish may also be categorized by their activity level, low, medium, or high. The more the fish swims, the darker the flesh will be. The darker the flesh, fish have a higher oil content and therefore a stronger flavor. When choosing the best cooking technique for a given fish, consider the oil content of the flesh. Low and high activity fish had limited cooking methods, while medium activity fish are quite versatile. So let's go to the diagram. I think what's really important is taking consideration breaking a flat fish down is kind of different than actual round fish. And this is really important. I mean, I, I 
can't tell you how much it's different for me. So look, I actually have a video of me breaking down a halibut. I'll leave that pinned right here. You can go check it out after you watch this, but it's me breaking down a halibut start to finish and giving a demo. So flatfish, let's hop on 102 and we're gonna go from top to bottom. Halibut, number one. Halibut is a very good fish. I love this fish. Next is gonna be turbo, right? Very common in higher end restaurants. Now we're gonna get into some sole. We have petrel sole, we have lemon sole, then we have regular sole. Now what's really crazy is a lot of times people will say that this sole is this sole and blah, 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 but the sole is sole. The only one that is supreme is called Dover sole. It only comes from one spot from the English channel. A lot of people fake and they want to put the name Dover sole, but make sure you ask the questions if they're charging an arm and a leg for it. Next, we have the black back flounder, fluke left eye flounder, and then the Dover sole at the bottom. Now the Dover sole is the supreme sole, the supreme flat fish, great fish. But if you have any questions, just leave them down below. Make sure you go watch that halibut video. It's really good. Next, we're going to get into low activity round fish. Okay, I'm going to cover this very shortly because I want to really focus on the more popular fishes and how to cook them and the reasoning behind it. So low activity round fish. The characteristics of the round fish include following eyes on both sides of the head, swim upright position, firm gill plate, low, medium or high activity. Okay, the wolf fish, crazy looking fish. Haddock, very common in fish and chips. Pollock, same thing. This is actually what imitation crab is made out of. Cod, very common fish as well and white hake. These are all common fish that you see usually on the cheaper end, but equally as delicious, right? Medium activity round fish. We are on page 107. I want you to be able to see what these fish look like. If you don't know the difference between a snapper and a tile fish, it's kind of rough if you want to make it into a kitchen or you should know this knowledge just for yourself. Walleye pike, tile fish, grouper, yellowtail snapper, vermilion snapper, Silk snapper, hybrid striped bass, black sea bass, wild striped bass. Okay, these are all very common fish. It's really good for you just to kind of know which one's which. Now you have this information. But look, I wanna read one thing, what I was talking about earlier with the Whole Foods, check this out. Black sea bass, look at this. Saltwater fish from New England to Florida, averages one to three pounds. Available drawn, whole, or in fillets. White, firm flesh, delicate texture. This fish only comes from the East Coast. Just keep that in mind. And listen, these descriptions on these fish are amazing. I'm not gonna read through them because I have to you know, move on. But if you do have any questions or if you have any questions on how to cook a specific fish, Fish, just hit me in the comments. I will answer back and we'll go from there. Okay, next, I wanna talk about these ones because these are the fish that are most common, right? The highly active round fish. And basically let's start at the top, okay? And we're on page 110. The Mahi Mahi, this is a head off Mahi Mahi. Farm race King Salmon, Pacific King Salmon, Atlantic Salmon, Arctic Char, Rainbow Trout, Spanish Mackerel, Atlantic Mackerel, Pompano, and Yellowfin Tuna Loin. Okay, so I want to talk about the most popular fish. So we're going to talk about salmon. We're also going to talk about tuna. And we're going to spend a little bit of time on the mahi-mahi, but not too much. So for the Atlantic salmon, available all year round through the United States because of farming, no wild catch is commercially available. Averages 6 to 12 pounds, deep pink flesh, high fat, shiny, and moist. Okay, listen, we all know salmon. I barely eat salmon nowadays because I've just used it so much. Like, uh, it's just overkill. But it's the most common fish, pretty much, beside tuna. You could pretty much treat this fish however you want. Smoking, poaching, baking, broiling, steaming, grilling, in dips, soups, sushi, and sashimi. All right, next, let's talk about the tuna. So we're gonna be on the next page. And basically, big eye tuna, saltwater fish from tropical temperature waters, ranges from 20 to 100 pounds. Rich, dark flesh. All right, same thing. All the tunas are pretty much the same. Some are lean, some are fatty. You could go down the rabbit hole in tuna. Trust me, we could, but I wanna keep it short and sweet. So for me, it depends on what application I'm using the tuna for, but I'm not gonna lie. I prefer most fish raw, especially tuna. That's just my preference. I know people think differently, but listen, I will also in the same sentence, crush a can of tuna on a sandwich. So yin and yang, right? We're gonna go to the non-bony fish. With non-bony fish, what that kind of means is like, and I know it's kind of hard because you don't really understand, but I never knew what that actually meant until I broke down a swordfish, okay? And it was like jelly. It was so weird and so awkward for me because like it has these armor plates. It felt like the bones were like on the flesh, but like these really hard plates. And it looked like armor, to be honest. But I didn't really know what, I couldn't wrap my head around until I broke one of these fish down. And this was a long time ago. Let's talk about it. So sturgeon, commonly used 
for caviar, but equally a delicious fish, swordfish wheel. And if you notice, this is a fish just like tuna that has four sides, right? So look at this steak cut, and this is the whole fish. And what you'll notice is that it has four quadrants almost, right? Same thing with tuna. Going down, you'll see monkfish. Now, monkfish, you never get head on, barely ever get head on. It's usually already filleted. That is another fish that when I broke down, it was just really awkward because it was super like jelly-like, but firm jelly. I don't know if I can explain that, right? And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions on these types of fish, from the sturgeon to the swordfish, the monkfish, also shark is a part of this. I know that's kind of controversial, but you know, mako is uh, very common, especially in the Caribbean, especially in Florida. These fish aren't that common. So if you ever do branch out and try one, make sure it's a fish purveyor that you're comfortable with, that you trust, or it's at a restaurant that is reputable. That's my only advice. Okay, some honorable mentions. We're gonna go to the last page, 116. Other fish that aren't a part of this bracket, right? Eel, American catfish, anchovies, sardines, John Dory, and tilapia. They're honorable mentions. They're popular. Tilapia is really popular. I like all of these fish. You know, the only thing that I don't really have a taste for is catfish. Catfish is very prevalent in the South. Eel is commonly used in sushi restaurants. The sardines are pretty much bait, but in higher end restaurants, we kind of use them as uh, hors d'oeuvres when they're in season. And John Dory is also known as a, you know, fine dining type fish, but equally delicious. So that's gonna wrap up the fish part of this. I'm also gonna leave a video down below of me breaking down a few different types of fish so you can have a full tutorial on how to do this. I think that's the most important thing. What I wanted you to get from this is you kind of have an understanding, a basic knowledge of what types of fish are out there. Obviously we could talk about it for days, but you need to do the due diligence of doing the research of what types of fish there are. But now you know what to look for and you know what things that are important when you're purchasing fish or where you should purchase fish. But if you wanna learn how to fabricate fish, I have a few videos out there. I have a video for halibut, I have a video for striped bass, and I also have a video for salmon. And I will leave these down below. If you have any questions, if you want to see another tutorial, or if there's a fish that you kind of have been dying to see or don't have available, if I can get it, I will do a YouTube video on it if I have enough comments and requests for it. That is gonna wrap it up for this episode. If you got value out of this video, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you stay along from the ride. I'll see y'all next week.